Alrighty, welcome back. This is Reimu. I'm doing a replay analysis for the player Sierra 117. Uh, he's in the tier 8 American premium ship, the Saipan. He is bottom tier and he sent this to me on you, um, asking me on YouTube. Uh, he had a game, he was bottom tiered and he just doesn't know what he could have done better. Um, he did end up losing this match so he was, um, he was hoping for some some you know some tips on what he could have done to possibly try to turn this game around uh or the the other thing that he mentioned was he got deplaned um quite early on as saipan which is not it's not a strange thing to get deplaned as saipan um it does happen quite a bit if you are if you are not very careful with your squadrons but that's what that's what the whole replay analysis is for, right? So let's get into it. Let me unpause this. So the map, Northern Northern Lights. He's got, uh, he is going against, let's see here. Riga, Buffalo, the Petro, Iowa, Thunder, Montana. He is going against the Graf Zeppelin. So um, I don't want to say it is an easy matchup to go against the Graf Zeppelin. Of course, she does have that speed advantage um which makes her very pretty much perma spotting your your team and um she has that speed to really get in and out of of enemy uh ships anti air so she does have that advantage but you have the incredibly high alpha strikes as a tier 8 carrier it's just that your reserves are very very small um so let's just see where the enemy is all going we go through mid get a quick spot on the center <clears throat> so I am going to be speeding this up um, every now and then just so we can save some time don't wanna all right the Yutlin is spotted Prince Eugen we're gonna be going going for a strike on this now this is a replay so the the reticles are not going to be accurate at all so just keep that in mind um sure wargaming finally let us see the the, the reticles on a carrier but they are by uh, by no means accurate at all it just helps that we can see what the somewhat what you know where the reticle is so he does get that quick drop off on the on, on the prinzo again um gets three three hits but uh, let's see here. Okay, so his I can't see exactly, but it seems like his his attack squadron did survive. I'm gonna assume maybe one plane survived, but um, let's see what else he did here. What else he's gonna be doing? At this point, really, as a side pen, you just want to be early scouting, especially as bottom tier. You just want to get a general idea of where everyone is positioning how the game will be playing out where your team is positioning and which flank you can really strike um to provide the most support this i am quite certain this is the correct reticle how it looks on your end um i'm pretty sure those torps are all probably going to only hit one you hit two okay that's going to be a dcp now that rune should be your 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 target she did DCP, so let's see if you go for that strike. Um, obviously, when you are going for th for the rune here while you're um, closing the distance, your eyes should be set on the map right here to see how the enemy team is going to be to be um, you know maneuvering, relocating, and repositioning. Because you, you do have a fair bit of uh, allies here, but they have their pretty much their whole team on this flank. Alright, so you do go for the rune. Alright, so Talon died immediately, so that's very unfortunate. Now, obviously, this attack run could have gone better. You, there's, there was no reason to not go through the cap and then turn to get that angle off. Because she's not going to be going bow into the island, you know? She wants to get at least some guns to bear, so she's going to at least turn sideways, you know, be parallel with the island. So. That could have gone better. You could have gotten a much more um, hits with the bombs and possibly a fire. 
So the DD is the Utland is on 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 uh, was it C cap? So we at least spot the Utland just a bit. The radar is being used by the Crunch that. But I don't think she'll be able to get any type of resets off. We get a torpedo drop off on the rune, and then load up the rockets. Not much to really say here, other than a little bit of a questionable, questionable strikes with your your planes. Um, the thing with Saipan torpedo bombers is they are best used against battleships, um, and they are best used mid to late game or if you find an isolated target because the alpha in my opinion the saipan's torpedo bombers are her bread and butter it's what makes her have the incredibly high alpha strikes um just because of how hard they hit i, I think um you know they I, i'm pretty sure she deals i think 6.2 6 6.4 um damage per torp so the flood chance is also high as well um, because they are United States torpedoes. So um, she does have that very strong torp. And I just like using them on an isolated target like that Petro Pavlos over there who's in the corner. Um, possibly striking him with rockets, forcing a damage con, and then going back at it with, uh, with torpedo bombers. That's just me. That's how I like to play my Saipan. I usually rotate between rockets and, and the dive bombers. And then later on when I find an, a target, um, I do go in with the torpedo bombers then. Um, I do value the torpedo bombers the, the most on Saipan. So that's how I just play her. Now in this situation here, let's take a, let's, let's take a look at the minimap. Let me make this a little bit darker so we can see. On the minimap right now, as we see here, your A side, immediately lost lost the the uh the quote unquote stalemate um the moment that you, that your talent just decided to just die for some reason your, your your talent died super early he was bow in so no wonder he got focus fired here and at this point you you know you have a you have to make a decision of focus this side to support your team who's all everyone is pretty much bow in except for the Iowa, or you can focus on this flank, help these guys push fast, and then let everything rotate over. This is your, your choice. The third choice you could do is possibly pressure this destroyer because he is a solo DD. If you, get, if you remove this destroyer, then the enemy team will have no eyes outside of the carrier um, providing spotting, as well as the torpedoes, um, they're not going to be a threat anymore as well. If this Yutlin gets is able, you know, to stay alive long enough, he can actually squeeze in through here in this little passageway, and he can he can just throw torps nonstop. Kronstadt, even if she radars, the Yutlin can easily just escape through this passageway and go southwards with this island blocking both the battleships and the and the crunch that's um you know line of sight it's crossfire um seeing how things are going right now i would be going for either either the petro to remove him from the game because he is the isolated one he is going to be the one providing crossfires because if he plays this correctly he would go south straight south while your team has to cross over to the left He's going to be providing constant crossfires, not like just on your team. So either you focus him or you focus the destroyer. Um, I can already see this push is going to be forming. And if these guys play this right, they'll be all rotating over, just steamrolling through. That's just how this map is looking right now. Your team is pushing over here. These guys are backing up already. <clears throat> but let's see what happens. Got to figure out how to speed this up. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Speed it up just a little bit. Yutlin, we have no idea where she's at. <clears throat> Alright. So we do decide to go on this flank. Good hit on the Prinz Eugen. But this, yeah, this anti-air is not... It's not something that you really want to be dealing with. Okay, you get a hit there. She's incredibly low, but... I'm pretty sure your dive bombers all just die at that point. None of them will be coming back. So you're already 
at breaking seven minutes of the game, you're already out of your or almost out of your dive bombers. You don't have pretty much any left outside of outside of this. These are your last torpedo bombers. The one that you have right here. So you have to play this extremely careful. Meanwhile, your rockets, you have eight left. These are your last five. So at this point, you can just already see it going down downhill for you, especially because you're playing as Scythan. You have to play smart. You can't just be attacking anything that you want. This Vladivostok, I would not strike because it does have a fighter up. And this is your last torpedo squadron as well. So you're going to lose these, these torpedo bombers. Let's see how many. Yep, kills two, three, and that's it. Your whole torpedo squadron is gone. All of them died. All, all, all of them died. That's very tragic. Because the fighters, um, fighters kill two, or the buffalo um, provided enough anti-air to kill off with the Vladivostok AA, kills off your whole torpedo squadron. So now you're just out of torpedo bombers, and um, yeah, the fighters didn't even they didn't even in you know tag on. So yeah, okay. So I can already see your issue here. Um, you have to know which target you can strike, which target you can't strike. Um, you have to know how you have to know the limit of how far you can take your squadrons, um, depending on the ship ships anti air how bunched up they are. Um, cause right now you're, you're already deployed of, unless the map is bugged, cause I do see that you have three left. So um, unless the replay system is bugged, cause I thought you actually lost your whole torpedo squadron cause I didn't see any on the map. So thankfully you saved three. That is a very good thing. But yeah, just looking at the way you're, you're striking, um, you play this, you're playing it a lot like, like a regular tech tree carrier, like a Lexington, um, you're pretty much just striking whatever you want, um, whenever you want. You're not really taking consideration of uh, who's using fighters, who is who is grouped up with that specific ship. Um, as Saipan, you have to play very carefully if you're not top tier um, ship in the game. Because right now in this match, you are bottom tier. You're going against tier 10s and tier 9s. Um, Buffalo's AA is quite scary, and even though Saipan has tier ten planes, that by by no you know by no means does that mean that you are immune to anti air, especially right now because of how anti air damages the planes, you will lose a lot of planes. So Vladivostok has his next fighter squadron up. So after this, I would just recall and get away from that area. Next, now who is a possible target? Yulin is not spotted at all. I would not go out of my way to find the destroyer. We have no intelligence whatsoever. What you have to do or what you can do at this moment, strike the Prince Eugen, look around to see where the Yulin's torps are coming from. That'll give you enough information to see, to get an idea of where the DD might be just by from where, you know, just if you play, if you play, if you ever play destroyer, then you will, you will generally get an idea of their their um, positioning, their pathing, and how they would torp. So just going off of that, you know, that, that'll that help you a lot with finding the one destroyer that you haven't had any information on since the beginning of the game. Um, right now, it is a pretty even match. Even after 10 minutes, so we just have to see what happens here. Um, what happened as to why as to why they uh why the team ended up losing nice work. so that Prince Oigan, I just want to touch up a little topic there you let your team finish out that Prince Oigan. what I would have done just to play it safe is because at the moment we are you guys are losing I will play it safe by just starting out that attack run just in case the Prince Oigan gets a heal and or starts to angle against your your team. If she started angling and popped a heal, she would have lived. That would that would have made it 
quite an issue because then she'll be sailing towards her team over here, thus making it quite a you know very difficult for you to get your strike off. You know, because right now you could just you could just take a look at you know your squadron right now. It is <laughs> it's pretty empty now. Um So that that's pretty much what I would have done. Played it safe, try to get the kill secure, even if it was a very low HP ship. Just because of the fact that he can't, he could have angled or he, you know, she, um, he could have popped the heal. Those two risks, especially when bottom tier has Saipan and you guys are currently, you know, you, you guys were losing at that moment. I would have just played a save and just started up the attack run. You, you, you didn't, you know, you won't have to release the payload. Um, if, you know, seeing how the Prince Logan did die. So you, you could have just not dropped at all, but you could have just sail, um, you know, flown away and to strike, strike a different target. Okay, so we do get a good drop here. Four pens, that's huge damage. Plus a fire. So there's that. And you did strike a, a thunder, so... Uh, let's see, one, two, two planes survive, that's good. That's enough for one good strike off, because by that time you're... Yeah, you should have... Um, you're gonna regen one dive bomber as well. <clears throat> now, in this point of the game, you're gonna be striking the Thunder again. You have to keep in mind, she has Def A. Rune is there. Montana is there. Very scary anti-air targets. These planes are not going to survive. They're both going to die, I'm pretty sure. And so... I would not have struck that Thunder at all. I would have just gone straight for the, either the Iowa or the, the Riga. Or, this one little thing you could have done. Try to find the Graf Zeppelin, drop a fighter at its maximum air concealment just to just to help your team get an idea of where she is so maybe they can take some pot shots at her grass up and has a very very large concealment radius even with concealment expert and that is one of the major downsides of grass up and so you can abuse that and try to pressure the grass up and further away um delaying her airstrike rotation and also pressuring her a bit so your allies have a chance to get some shots in um, here and there. Your uh, your GK ends up dying. The reason why your team is playing like this is because they have no idea where the where, where the Yutlin is. So this I don't I don't I don't blame at all. What your team needs is a spotting, so you you need a fighter to be dropped right here, and then take your planes over to the Riga or the Iowa. Not right here. This doesn't do anything. This this fighter placement. Your team just oh whoa she went all the way over there. Well now we have the intelligence um intelligence data to actually you know get her later on. Right here Iowa, very scary anti airship. As well as the Grav Zeppelin's AA is there as well. You just lost all your dive bombers for nothing. In five minutes. Yeah, this is a very, very unfortunate outcome. You per so I can I can already see it here. You lose the game because you you run out of stamina. You run out of planes, so you you cannot provide any more support to the team at all. That's just what I'm seeing here. I can already. Get an idea. You get the strike off on the thunder. He pops the FAA. That plane's gonna die. Now you just use your two planes to strike. Uh, let's see who you're striking now. The Iowa or the thunder. <clears throat> thunder did use the FAA, so the FAA is still up. The enemy is about to win. Yeah. So this plane dies as well. Now you're completely just done for. Car your, your, your carrier is pretty much useless now. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm getting at is the damage number that you're seeing here, it's all from the floods and the fires. Um, you didn't really contribute in terms of, of uh, finishing off targets, focusing a single ship, getting it out of the, um, off the board. Um, and yeah, you guys just lose. So, yeah, it's pretty much um, it's pretty difficult to really 
um, try to explain exactly what you should have done because there's so many outcomes that can happen in a in a game like this as bottom tier. Um, in my opinion, I would have just focused down the Petro, finish her off, and then on the left flank, focus down the Riga, focus down the Iowa, try to finish off targets as fast as possible. Don't let them, don't, don't strike them, and then let them heal, and then come back later to have to get more strikes in, especially when you're bottom tier. You pick a target, you just abuse it, and tell the team to focus fire it, and then finish off that one target then it'll give your team more room to open up and wide you know rotate accordingly um because one ship loss is a very big impact on you know regardless if it's the 12v12 so that that's just my take from it um this game it was close but you know i did look at the graphs up in squad and she was still pumping out a lot of damage um planes non-stop but a lot of micromanaging things that you could have done this one is a bit, you know, like I said, a little bit difficult to do a I think, proper analysis of. Um, I'm just giving my input, but honestly, the of course, you know, it's not only 100% you. There is some blame to put on the team. I don't want to say it's majority of the blame though, because um, you are the carrier. So a lot of the impact is going to be coming from you you being able to finish off targets you being able to pressure enemy ships and being able to provide spotting that alone is gonna help you win the game pretty much most of your games especially um that that yearland not being killed off asap was also a major down downside um for your team they couldn't you know they were just playing in fear they couldn't really push past any islands because that destroyer was just roaming for free so you know there's a lot of these things that can just add up to a snowball effect a lot of these things that you could have done better possibly change the outcome but then again there's a 12v12 any, anything could have happened you know so just uh just try to try try to change things up focus on clearing out enemy targets um you have to prioritize your targets a lot better um i am making a you know the next episode for plane management but one of the things that's going to be talked over is um what to do when you're bottom tier that's one topic that's going to be on there so this will help saipan this will help carriers that are you know a tier six in a tier eight match for example but you have to treat your even even when you're playing as Saipan who has tier 10 planes if you're bottom tier or going against any grouped up enemies you have to question if it's worth it because your planes you know tier 10 tier 8 tier 6 it doesn't matter the way how anti-air works now um the damage is all focused on one plane unless you eat a flak so you're gonna lose that plane so you have to make sure is this drop gonna be worth it and you just generally just avoid groups of enemies that's pretty much an easy answer to say to give you and that vladivostok who use fighters don't strike it let your team deal damage to it sure damage farming is nice but you know intelligence um intel is a lot more important as a carrier damage will just come the more you know the more you get you get used to doing something like this but that's pretty much um, it for this one the uh i hope it helped you out some um just let me know if you have any other questions you could just dm me or discord or comment in the comment section and i'll get to it so yeah uh that's pretty much it so if it helped you let me know um it is it was a quite a tricky game to commentate over but you know i i i, tr I did what i could um your team could have played better you could have played better it's no one's fault really so don't let this really bring you bring you down but yeah um thanks for seeing the replay um i will hopefully try to pump out more videos later on if you guys enjoyed it let me know and thanks for the support i'll see you guys later